This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Just admiring my green friends here. <clears throat> Trying to pick the most opportune time to propagate them. I just, since I bought my original uh, Aeroid, or maybe not my original one, because my Deliciosa was, but this is a Deliciosa Albo and node cutting that I bought about two years ago, and I planted it outside in winter. I bought it for myself for Christmas, so I, it was in the ground by December. We had a, our first freeze that year. It was two years ago, winter. And it survived and it shot off some leaves. And then I saw the rabbits were eating some of my aeroids I had planted outside. So I uh, moved them inside here until I can get them propagated and then move them out. But I just started thinking about what the best time and the best way to do it. And I got given some aeroid cuttings of philodendrons Look at this uh, philodendron linamii. It's getting ready to unfurl these red leaves. Super fast grower. And um, during the winter before the freeze this year, and just cuttings, and I buried them outside where I did some philodendron cuttings. And when it froze, the leaves turned bright red and stayed that way until the rain started. And then they went back to green. It was very bizarre. but. The plants are real big now, so obviously doing cuttings in winter in Florida is in the ground is is a perfect way to do it. Foolproof way to do it. 100% success so far. Um, so just cut it like right here and then plant this part or even divide it more, but I would just plant the whole thing, that big piece. Anyway, I got these to improve our orchard floor because they're uh, biomineral active plants. Um, they work with biology to release uh, compounds that are plant beneficial, like calcium available water. <clears throat> anyway, I love them. So today I think I'm going to go out and look at, uh, I thought I almost killed this begonia. It's my favorite one. It's some silver leafed one, um, but it came back. Killed from the fungus they get when you get them at the big box stores. Don't be eating my rabbit, Shelly. So I'm going to look at the biraba, you know, the Rulinia, and um, I'm gonna go look at the uh, red chewy sugar apple I found, because I bought like six seeds, I think it was six, or they gave me six, I bought five. They're really expensive. It was a couple years ago at least. And I think only one or two made it, or sprouted. I think it was two and I plant stuff and then I just leave it and don't think about it and I know that when I see the fruit that I'll <laughs> recognize the the uh, the plant <clears throat> and I was walking down looking at those sugar apples along 12th Street and there it was a red chewy sugar apple and I like the chewy sugar apples the best. It was some weird name variety, you know, they got the seeds from Asia somewhere and it's like a known variety in Asia, chewy red sugar apple and um, then they named it, I forget what it was called, I think it starts with an I, but it's a two word thing and um, but it's a red chewy sugar apple from that group of seeds. So I was excited to see that because, you know, sugar apples make so much uh, seeds. Look at how healthy these Rolinia are. They're 
some of our biggest trees. Um, so are completely 100% dry farm Drolinia trees. And, uh, I love it. They would lose their leaves. They were bought from little tiny three gallons from the nursery, um, like three foot tall and planted here along the driveway. But it looks like possibly we're gonna have some fruit because that's a real fat um, flower there. I see pollen. So, I think if I would have been watering these trees um, in early spring when they put off huge, massive fruit, I would have had fruit already, but that's one of those things that they've been in the ground six years without ever being watered, so uh, it's probably best just to leave them as they are, because our water is... Uh, Calcareous, you know, calcium carbonate infused. And these are probably got an acid uh, rhizos, rhizosphere, acidic pH. So to, when you add that, and you don't have any of this, this living um, buffer, because that's what that is. Uh, so I, I meet great people that come here and want to look around, and I like offer them seeds and fruit usually and um they buy the stuff and um i meet some smart people and and um they all want to do uh or are doing natural farming like this their own version because we're all unique there's not one right way to do it it's however you have found is the right way and um but it, um, they were a, a water treatment, he was a water treatment um, salesperson. And so that got me thinking about PFASs, you know, those are the forever, forever chemicals that are in sewer sludge and a lot of the fertilizers that have been applied and um, through the years. And uh, they don't break down and they, you know, they cause uh, all kinds of disease in humans and probably other animals and um, we you got to get them out of our system or we have to get them out of our system so I I looked up you know because I'm curious whether for some reason this is so obvious but I didn't know if sewage water you know treated sewage water um, is with PFASs and I guess yeah that's like of course it is because they move through water and air so I thought oh I'm so glad I don't live next to um, something like that but, uh, but he was very knowledgeable on um, how they're how they uh, address remediating the PFASs and I um, I looked it up before and it was like three ways. There was a car, uh, a organic carbon way and there was a, they're all natural ways. Of course you have to fix pollution with nature. So there's those birds eating my citrus. Oh, get down, get off there. No. And um, yeah, you can't, yeah, that's, duh. I didn't know that, but it's so obvious when you think about it. And um, so uh, carbon, and then there's like a structured water. It's an ion exchange, which is basically structured water. So um, water that moves over rocks or, you know, in a stream or um, through beads. Uh, so it change, switches uh, angles all the time. It restructures the water. And it doesn't take the chemical or the PFAS is out, but it um, makes clean water. So you can like trap them, I guess. Probably in another carbon thing. And then there's another one called a membrane. And this one, there's not a lot of information on it. So he showed me what the carbon one was, and it was basically wood shavings, wood chips from like 
to find the saddest ones from, um, from, uh, I'm gonna get out off my fruit, you freaks. Look at what they do to my fruit. I mean, this beautiful citrus fruit, and people have such trouble. This is four years from ground. I mean, from seed, from ground, in the ground, planted in the ground when they were this big, um, right here and right here. Never given any manure around them, um, just on the orchard floor, like, because I used to scatter it, throw it. Um, but these never had any wood chips or anything. They just were planted, and they're like, look at how healthy that is. Um, yeah, that leaf doesn't look healthy, but we just got through a drought, but the leaves are like really healthy. Um, and the birds want my healthy fruit. No, I need seeds off these trees, but they're starting to flower again. Isn't that weird? Who'd have thought? Uh, I didn't know that citrus would like repeat flower. Yeah, look what they do to the fruit. That's the birds, see underneath? Very little pecking, but on top, Peck, 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 peck. Oh, this is not greening fruit, people. Please leave it alone. Oh, I need more citrus trees, obviously. Good thing I planted hundreds of them. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the sawdust, it's like sawdust from uh, Home Depot. The, or not Home Depot, from uh, Tractor Supply that we use for could use for bedding. It's the fine one. And um, and I guess they put some sort of bacteria, maybe the bacteria is already in the in the um, poop, and the uh, the reaction causes, um, I guess, probably digestion of the PFASs in the, that go into the wood chips and um, get excreted by the... Uh, by the bacteria. <clears throat> I don't know exactly. So I was just thinking about the membrane. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going over to that. Uh, I can see my sugar apples from here, you little darlings. So the PFAS is the membrane thing. It was like. The mushrooms. So when I was making um, my teas that I sprayed on this place for <laughs> months and months and months, day after day after day, hour after hour, it was the worst. I hate spraying now, but I did it and I would mix like a lactose bacillus and a, a really um, fungally dominant um, uh, degraded wood from that a uh, big old uh, oak tree that was there, that one of those old growth ones. So it's like soil from there, a huge handful of it. And then um, I would soak wood chips and um, for my compost. And <sighs> what else did I put in there? I would sprinkle like probably a little bit of manure in there. Uh, zebu manure, just a tiny little bit. And I'd put a lid on it and let it soak for a couple days. And after the first day, it would form a like a membrane over it. And it had to be from the fungi. It was like skin, it was like a rubbery skin. So the membrane thing, I don't know, it made me start thinking about, don't the bananas look good? I mean, really, come on. And there are little Atamoya trees popping up. <sighs> Please. <laughs> the fungi and how did the floor, how does water, did the water membrane, how does the, the, like, the fragile clean water become below all this in Florida? Above the sun. Made me start thinking about mushrooms and and um, how they harvest water from the air from leaves, leaf tips, the ones that grow inside plants and in like redwoods. They've shown it does this. If it doesn't in redwoods, it doesn't in other stuff. Um, it's one system. 
water and air and they you know mushrooms can grow really fast how do they do that they've got to be some sort of mechanism or you know some pressure thing with the fungi in the high up trees i don't know harvesting the water and pushing it below ground and keeping it there because water doesn't move through fungi <clears throat> and all the ensuing life is connected to it. So all the green, all the life, all the trees, all the plants, it's one giant system. And what are you doing with this? Cardinals. Um, I don't know. It just made me think because you know, it's so polluted, it's become so polluted, our planet and um, Florida especially. And I don't know, it could be paradise here. I mean, you see everything grows here, here easily. People want to know about dry farming, but you kind of got to just get your biology in your soil. And um, where's that red? Sugar apple, I see it. And um, plant, experiment, and keep trying. That's that's the secret. You got to keep trying. You got to keep adding natural natural inputs, carbon inputs, natural carbon inputs. This is our daily manure. I put uh, that on each of the trees this year. Sugar apples are looking good this year. Um, and that, all this natural stuff cleans up the pollution, obviously. That's what people have a hard time, it's hard to put it together. It's just, uh, I don't know, I'm glad that uh, people are coming by here and buying seeds and and trying to do this or are doing it throughout uh, Florida where they can, the tropical fruit trees. I think you can do it in like 9B if you have uh, big oak trees already in place. Would be easiest, I would think. Or big trees, pine trees, probably doesn't matter if they're oak or pine, but uh, both would be better, obviously. So here's the chewy sugar, purple sugar apple. And it's a, it's a kind of a different color than the um, than the uh, Kampong mauve one. I think maybe I should go look at those because we got some of those on our trees. Yeah, that's a real purple one. Uh, good sugar cane stuff I planted is coming up. Most of it. A lot of it doesn't, but that's better than it used to be, where none of it would come up. Um, it's the Adamoya that's big enough to flower and has in the past, but it hasn't this year yet. Maybe it's just, I don't know. It's kind of bizarre. I guess that happens. Probably could use some manure. I know we really focus on the fungi here. Uh, if you have all these different fungi like this and the other stuff and, you know, I've seen lion's mane fungi here and I mean, I think I counted 17 different ones. I think it's higher now, but I stopped counting at that. Uh, that thing, because if you don't have the life, once the life is gone, then the salt intrudes and it doesn't support the life. It doesn't support the plants, all the plants. It doesn't support um, that because it's changed. It's forever changed. And the only way to fix it is by <laughs> planting more trees probably. Trees of purpose, trees of medicine, and trees of fruit. And 
trees you make tea out of. tiny uh, pigeon peas are popping up everywhere. Uh, I've been throwing them around. Uh, looks like our cinnias are doing okay. Okay, I gotta get over. So I couldn't figure out what this, still can't figure out what this is, this seedling. Something I planted. Uh, what is it? Almost looks like a climb muck, but it's too robust and healthy. Uh, those things usually don't grow very fast. Um, egg fruits grow fast. Could be from that nice egg fruit I have in the front, seed grown. That's what I'm thinking it might be. Here's jackfruit off our, our trees. I guess maybe I'm getting up to 30 jackfruits here. Uh -huh. Culinary ginger, ginger officinalis. This is that uh, oil nut tree from India. They made uh, lamp oil out of the nut. Looks like we're gonna have lots of um, Garcinia fruit to taste and buy seeds from uh, different types. I know we got lots of cashew. Uh, so, you know, Garcinia. See you, wasp. I wasn't going to put my hand on the leaf. Get stung by you. Forget that. This little mango froze, but it's coming back. Doesn't look like we're, yeah, there's a, quite a bit of black sapote, but not like last year. It pissed me off because I screwed up picking them. But they're good fruit. They're not ready for the public yet, I don't think. <laughs> so here's, people are very interested in a cha cha, and um, so here's, here's. A good way to grow them with the sugar cane and the weeds and the you know other trees the guava nitrogen fixing tree and the caesar weed Okay, I'm up to uh, like probably 175 bananas because I did uh, like 150 of them in the last two years planted, I think. No, so I couldn't be up to that much. Yeah, I am because I have been dividing them a little bit before. So like 175 varying sizes of bananas. I want to get up to like 375, but they got to grow See, they're all singles. I divide them. I divide them and plant them when they pop off. I need to do this one. It's easiest if you do it when they're small. <clears throat> and then once they get a certain size, I let one grow. Um, the roses, Gemma, this is that. Uh, it can be thornless, but it shoots off uh, thorn canes and it gets huge, it smells so good. And it kind of blooms year round, it big blooms throughout the year. And little tiny roses and floribunda, probably what it is, tea floribunda of some sort. I forget the name of it. I thought it was Pleasant Hill Cemetery, but I can't seem to find any information on it anymore. Um, 
this is one called Lamarck. Uh, it's at night when it's full moon, they look gorgeous and it's really, really, really uh, intense. Um, blooms year round, um, big blooms. Nice, makes hips and smells really good. It's the highest in fragments. Here's that uh, Pleasant Hill Cemetery. This is the mother plant of all the ones I've done cuttings of. It's quite large. This one, I got all the thorns out of it as it was growing, but the cuttings, I didn't do that with. So I got them planted on this side, cuttings of Lamarck and um, this rose. This, this is a cutting that's planted in that corner. And then it's already gotten from here down to there. So it's a giant one. It's like, that's like 10, 12 feet. So, so it, you have to have room for it. It's it big. You could train them. If they don't have the thorns, they're not really a problem. I'm very impressed. So every one of these sugar apples along here, the a couple of them died and I replaced with Atomoyas. And they're there, the little Atomoyas are there. Um, right there, planted by this ginger. So I like to plant the ginger with the little tree, but the ginger has to be little too. So when you plant a, a little tree with a big ginger, the ginger can smother it. So you kind of have to, uh, they have to grow up together, I guess is what it is. It's the best. If you don't want to manage it. Because I don't manage these anymore. But they have trees growing under here. So at every sugar apple, there's a cha-cha. And um, right there, look at how healthy that is. It's full shade. Underneath this uh, ginger and sugar apple and surrounded by two mangoes. I don't want to see my neighbors, so it's a sure way to do it. A cha-cha hedge along here. Nope. Oh, I was supposed to be looking at red sugar apples. So yeah, this is totally, maybe it's the same color. They're pretty fruit. The red ones are really pretty. I can't tell a difference. I know some people can, but I can't in the flavor. Um, I don't know why I can't. <laughs> These are the compound moths along here. They don't produce very well along here. And, um, I gave them some manure, so they're starting to produce better, it looks like. That's good. Oh, yeah. It's do they're doing better. Um, they are pretty. The other fruit seems more elongated than these fruit. These fruit are more like the green chewy sugar apple. I don't know if it's just that tree or I'm imagining, but that's just what I noticed. I got some stuff planted in between this ginger, but it seemed like it was able to grow fast enough. This, the uh, citron. I love this ginger. And um, this is a, I think it's a ponderosa lemon, or yeah, I think that's what it is. These are both gifts from my friend Frank. Thank you, Frank. Anyway, uh, this is Florida Natural Farming. I hope you have a beautiful day. Frog Valley Tropical Food Farming.